Okay, Logan, where are we going now? So now we're going to Doug's office. He does mechanical design partially, also does the CAD drawings, and he's been with us for over 20 years, so he wow. wears a lot of different hats. Whoa. Talk about a long tenure. Yeah, wow. So Doug Hardly meet people that have been working somewhere for 20 years, let me tell you. Yeah, uh, Steve Rockwell has been here for 35 and Jameson for almost 20 now. So what? a lot of long-term employees here. Wow, that's amazing. That and is amazing. John, our manufacturing manager, over 20 years too. 20 years. Yep. All so right. This is Doug. Doug. In his office. Pleasure to meet you, Doug. Jay's Audio Lab here. Checking out your, you know, your facility, of course, all the madness, everything that happens that I think my audience is always has always wanted to know. So thank you for having me here. Yeah. And tell us a little bit about what you do here. I do all the 3D CAD um, drafting and all the drawings for the chassis and all the parts. Okay, so when a new design, when, they're, when you guys are thinking about that next model and trying to you know, come up with ideas, do you sketch that or how, how does that work? Um, actually, all of us will have ideas and We'll put them together and go up and start from there. <laughs> okay, so then it's done and com computer generated images. Then you begin the trial of creating it and then seeing, like, okay, this is going to work for what we want or it's not enough space. Like, how one of the things I wanted to know is, and this is actually so interesting to me because I've, I've never met someone who does what you do. So it's quite interesting. So, excuse me if my questions are going to seem very amateur, but that's why I'm in front of a man who. Who does this for a living uh, when you come up with a design a sketch of something and uh, let's say you miscalculated something I'm assuming that particular rough draft gets tossed in the trash and it starts with something fresh or how does that work well I would say part of what Doug does is so we don't have to throw it in the trash we're able to do it on the computer and generating to see where the screws are gonna go how the boards are gonna be put in place Wow! Um, but you know in the er very early stages like Doug said we all get a piece of trying to contribute to the next design and we will we'll even do mock-ups uh, okay. with, with foam, just to get that, an idea, a sense of size and space and connectors and print it all to scale so we can see it. Um, and this is one of our newest things, this 3D printer. Check, the 3D printer? And Let me see it. <laughs> this is something that we did early on. This? this yeah. So this actually gets done here? Or, or how, do, how does this... Well, yeah, just a, you know, a model to get an idea side of a 3050 or 3060 to me that's a quarter scale <laughs> yeah quarter scale <laughs> think about that so then so you make the amplifier all together in this essentially the model or just how does that we, we've only done just that just so that far. so far okay Th this is still new so we're it's kind of trial and error at the moment but okay we'll kind of help us visualize what the next products will look like okay um can you, when you design something and, and you're coming up with the next model, are you able to calculate weight or no? The, yep. You can also calculate how, yeah. how accurate is that when you come it's, out? It's really accurate because it just takes the solid material that's there on, on the model and it calculates from that. It's like... It's just math. Does it also tell you when, nope, what you're trying to do is not working. Nope, it's not, I'm not going to let you do what you're trying to do. Meaning you're trying to put something in a space perhaps that's not big enough. Does it tell you like what you're yeah, trying to like put in there? It won't. Like if two parts are interfering or something. Right. It'll yeah. tell you that. Yeah. Wow, man. That's, that's where we are today. So um, that's, to me, that's exciting, by the way, what mm -hmm. he does. Like I love knowing that I can just sit down and just play with the computer and, come, and be creative because the cool mm -hmm. part is that now you're letting your imagination come up with that next concept now have you ever sketched something and I know you said that everyone has a part here right so it's a team effort so one of the things one of the biggest things things that I've heard while I've been here is everyone has input right so it's a family essentially mm -hmm. which is great to know have you ever designed something that let's say three family members liked and two did not and you guys had to like flip a coin and we'll do it <laughs> it's happened all, all the yeah. time <laughs> yeah no so those meetings go for a long no, time I don't, it's, what is it that you hate the screen is too small what is it the buttons are too large or too yeah. tiny or yep. you know yeah. that man i would i'll be the worst person to be in that in that meeting because i it can get frustrating that way right right absolutely and uh 
what else besides the design? Does it also give you an idea, for instance, of, okay, here's the drawing we came up with. We all agree, we all signed off on it. Do you know more or less what it would cost after you have designed? Does it have a way of more or less projecting the cost that it would be a particular product when you are creating it on the computer? Yeah, we have to do a little bit of work, like for figuring out the size of the pieces of aluminum, for example. And, and right. Uh, and figure out the time it'll take to machine the parts and stuff like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it's also like prototyping how it's going to be put together, the assembly, how long boards are going to be ran for. So there is a lot of variables that go into it. And usually we don't know costing until a prototype is almost finished. Almost finished. Yeah. Have you ever, have a, have you ever had a prototype almost finished that just never came to life? That just for whatever one big thing that you guys overlooked, that you're like, God, I can't believe we didn't, we didn't, we didn't, we completely overlooked this. And you don't have to give me a specific example, but has it ever happened where you're like, man, I can't believe nobody thought about that, that particular nuance that the reason why this can't come to life or we can't release it. Well, uh, for example, designing the 812, it went through many iterations, okay. and new features. Mm -hmm. So what we originally thought it was going to be, it completely transformed into what it is now. Uh, but it is nice because marketing gets input, sales gives input, you know, engineers give input. And so we can all work together to get to the final goal. But there is some clashing because right. know, sales and marketing wants everything. Yeah. Engineering Absolutely. is realistic. Absolutely. So that's part of uh, the battle of designing a product. It's one of my biggest dreams in life, and maybe one day throughout my journey, I get to do at least 10% of what you do. I would give anything to s sketch up my own power amplifier. I've owned over 300 power amplifiers. I would love to just sit down and have the ability to draw something and just see it. Like, Because to, to me, what you do is so exciting to know that you drew it there and it's now here. Like it's now in a box, it's shipping out. And to know that you have to do with that, like it's got so much, to me it would be like, a, my pride would be up here. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It so is, it is very see cool to see. Yeah, cool. See all the blood, sweat, and tears, the hours in this beautiful office. I must say that you know now it's part of the family, it's part of Boulder, and I, I would love to do what you do someday. I just chose the wrong career path. That's it. You know, that's one. <laughs> so this is going to be the newer product that is yet to be released. Okay, soon. There you go. A six one. Now you get to see how they do this here in Boulder. Like everything is just the three D modeling. Um, you know, and, and he gets to do magic here. I wish this was my job. Man, this is amazing. Yes. Soon to be released. <laughs> Soon to be released. What is it missing right now? Is there anything in particular that you're still working on? No, um, I don't actually do the wiring in here because that okay. takes, takes me a, a while. I haven't spent a lot of time on that. But uh, everything else is pretty much in there except for the small components. I just have to make sure everything's going to fit together and actually just like you were saying if you have two parts interfering and it's not going to go together <laughs> got it got it that's love it man i love i love to see this well and part of what this is too is thinking about how we're going to assemble something or if we have to do a repair how easy it is to get to those screws it, and, and that's something that we've learned over time uh the easier it is to get to screws to and pull it. boards the better it is for everyone. You know, I never thought that you take you take that into account. I find that so interesting to see that. Here, the lifting I don't mind. I mean, <laughs> in real life, but I like to. I rather lift the keyboard and the mouse. To be honest with you. Let me grab I'm, you something. I just want to show um, you kind of. So, did you go to school for that? Like, how did you uh, learn this? I actually didn't. Um, my brother started here. Okay. And he was doing it 2D on the Mac and just drawings on paper and. Uh, and Jeff let me, I took over after he left, after he worked here 10 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jeff let me pick out a 3D CAD program and I started doing the modeling in 3D. So I started out in 2D and went into the 3D drafting and modeling. And we've come a long way, I'm assuming, from yeah. what it was to what it so is today. It's it's not even close. Paper, you know. It's the tolerance is so used. Nicer now being able to have <laughs> well. like, yeah, and and, I, and and I'm assuming you do a lot more. So here, <laughs> so to show you kind of where it starts. <laughs> this is. I mean, it's like, it's kind of arts and crafts, and a little <laughs> beat up. But to give you a sense of size and what the front panel and rear panel looks like, 
you know, we did all of this to scale. Wow. And it's, <laughs> it's not far off from... From the, re the real thing. Wow. So this, that is really cool. This is the first time in my life that I get to see a real rough draft of a high-end component, whether it be television, it doesn't matter, a hair dryer, it doesn't matter. This, I never knew this is how things come to life. And it's a rough, rough draft, but... <laughs> but <laughs> it's, I mean, but this gives you a hell of a lot to, like, it, it, you can almost visualize, like, what it will look like. I mean, it's the feet and everything. I mean, it's, this is great. Look at this. this. The things we're learning at Boulder, I've never learned anything like this anywhere else. That's so cool to see. Really interesting. I think you all are finding that quite interesting, right? I hope you are. Here's cool. another example of that black remote there. So this remote, excuse me. That was printed on the 3D printer just for a test. So this is a black remote. It looks like it's a 2110 remote. Is that what that is? Or I think uh, 1110 maybe. 1110. So you're looking at a... It's plastic, and uh, which you guys do not do. You look, you do metal, which I love. Uh, so this is a 3D print, right? So this way we can test a part before we machine it. Or that, can you see it? You zoom in on that. So now you're looking at this. That that's great. That's awesome. So thank you so much for your time. Much appreciated. Once again, have a lovely weekend. Thank you for your time. Great, man. It's time for lunch. Yeah, you hungry? Yeah.